Okay, Jägrot Bane. It, uh, oh, so the fair that we're, we're thinking about organizing for you guys, it seems like we're gonna do it probably on like the 17th in that area, right? So that's after the, the projects are due and it's a Sunday, so you guys should be free and it'll be like three, four hours, something like that. Yes? Do what later, Jenna? The problem is, it's not just, okay, so there are a few things. First, I have to submit my grades at a certain deadline. If we do it later, that means it's the next weekend. And the next weekend is a lot later than that. It's basically Christmas, American Christmas, 23rd, 24th is like Christmas time. When AUA is closed one of the days because of Christmas, and the next day it's, it's actual Christmas, so a lot of people don't even work. Um, and then after that, it's like New Year's. That's why. Right? So unfortunately not. Sorry. Um, other questions or concerns? Any questions about the homework? Do you, do you guys understand that Pong is just a two-player game? It doesn't have, you don't have to do any artificial intelligence. You can just have two buttons here and two buttons here. And just have two people play against each other. Yeah. If you want to do artificial intelligence, do it. I'll be very impressed. Ah. Okay. <coughs> oh my god. Okay. Look, I will post this slide. Um, I have a lecture about that actually. Um, development. Um, canvas draw update events. Here we go. Okay, watch this. Science? Okay. Go to Esa. Hostel Esa. Link Nel. I'll put the link on your Facebook page later. Okay? Cool. Good question. <laughs> Any other questions? Nothing? Okay. All right. So let's begin. Um, so up until now, we've covered uh, two, two programming languages. We've covered the JavaScript programming language and the Java programming language. And we saw that they have some similarities and differences. And the two sort of main things that you've noticed that they're very different in is in syntax, in the way you write things, and their approach. Right? So Java forces you to put everything into these classes, which can then be used to construct objects. JavaScript doesn't require that. JavaScript just allows you to write code however you like. Uh, Java forces you to specify types ahead of time. JavaScript does not. JavaScript allows for dynamic typing. Um, so there are various approaches to the two languages, and there are some benefits to each. Right? The benefit of having, for example, a loosely typed script is that you have more freedom as a programmer to do whatever you want. The downside to this is you have freedom to, do mis to make mistakes. Java prevents you from making a lot of these mistakes by forcing you to do it in a very specific methodical way. So there are pros and cons to both. Now, what I'd like to do today is discuss a few actually kind of important topics that we've skimmed over as we were programming. So for example, consider a function like this. And by the way, I'll go back between JavaScript and Java to show you the same concepts in both. Consider a function like this, which takes a, and let's suppose a is a variable. So let me create a variable here, const um, bogos, and let's put a one in him. Okay, so then we call f with bogos. In here, we set a to, five, to six. We are going to console log bogos here, and then we are going to console.log bogos there. Question, what will you see on the screen? One, one. So notice something interesting. We're passing bogos here, 
the value of boros comes in here. So A doesn't, it's not boros, it's the value of boros, which is 1. So A takes 1. The fact that we change what A is, the fact that we change what, that A is now 6, doesn't change the value of boros. It changes the value of A. Does that make sense? Which is why when you print boros again, boros is still referring to or still has inside of it a 1, not a 6. This is a thing, this is actually something that many of you intuitively understand, but I want to make it clear that this is what happens. This is known as passing by value. Okay, in here when you pass boros, you're not passing the variable or anything fancy, you're literally passing a value, which is a 1. So you're putting a 1 into the hole. The 1 then comes into here and gets assigned to A. You can then change what A is, but you're not going to change what boros is. Is that part clear? Is there any confusion about this part? None. Okay, now let's consider something else. Suppose we have an object that has inside of it a name, Boros. We pass Boros here, and we do a.name is now Bedros. We do Boros.name, and then Boros.name. Not you. Now what happens? What do you think? Why? Yeah, so this is known as passing by reference. So understand that we have an object that has inside of it a boros. You pass this exact object in and now A is also referencing this object. When you change the name, you are changing this original object. And so when it comes back and you read out name, the name has been modified. Let me explain it to you in slightly different terms. Um, imagine this. Imagine I have another variable, const foo, that references this. Wait, sorry, sorry, not gogos. <laughs> sorry. Okay, good, bogos. Yeah, let's change this to let, why not, just, okay. Okay, now, if I do foo.name is high, and then I do bo boros.name, what is boros.name? It's high. Okay, let me explain. Okay, you have memory. In, or you can think of it like this, and in that memory you have variables, so we have boros and foo. Okay, let's also make an example of values. Then we have A and B. Okay, A and B point to the values directly. So A has one. When you make a B, B now has one. Which means if I now modify B, all I'm gonna do is modify this, not this. However, Objects and arrays are different. They are referenced. So what you do is this. Boros has a reference to an object. When you make a foo, you're saying have foo reference the same thing. In other words, foo references the same object. Understand? So they're both pointing, they're both referencing the same object, which inside has name Bogos. Now if B then decides to change the thing it's referencing, 
the thing that Boros is referencing is the same thing. So it will be modified in both. Yes? If we change Boros later, will it change? Yes, because they're pointing at the same thing. Look, look, alert, hang on. Boros.name is? Not name, just change Boros. Ah, no. Okay. Now, if you change, you can then, because it's a let, because it's not a constant, you can change what boros the variable is pointing at, right? You could put a number in it, for example. You could do boros um, is 5, which basically means... Right? That's what that means. It means Boros used to point at the object, then we erase that and we put 5. Foo will continue to point at the same object. Got it? Chamaskamarza. <laughs> Boros hima hinga. I step hinga. Inchin. Ah, Erobem. That's Hanem. Asmes ster, asem let, zu, havasara boros. Ha, zu imech hima incha. What goes into zu? And we changed Poros to 5, so Poros is now 5. Fu is still referencing the object, <coughs> and A and B still have 1 and 1 inside, respectively. Does that make sense? Let's go through some more examples, because then we have to talk about memory management a little bit. Okay, so I have an A, which has an object inside. It has name, yay. I have another let B, which references the same thing that A references. I have another one that references the same thing that B references. What does this mean? It means that we have A, B, and C. We have an object with name, name a A references this. B references the same thing that A references. So B also references this. C references the same thing that B references. So C also references this. Now suppose I now change that I say A should be 5. What do B and C reference? The same thing, that does not change. All I've done is change this to 5. Does that make sense? Yes? It has been in start. Okay, if you change B, if you then do B is 7, all you've done is you removed this reference and you made this a 7. What this means is that the value of A, what is the value of A right now? It's a reference. It's not a value. It's a reference. It's like a pointer. It's a reference to an object. So all you're saying is have B point at the same thing that A is pointing at. Say she, B does not point at A. B points at what A points at. Haskatsar? Yeah? Okay. Okay, now, every time you make an object, 
you are allocating some memory, right? Your computer has a certain amount of memory. When you're running your application, the operating system grants you memory. And then what you do is every time you make a new object, you are creating, you are taking some memory to store that object inside. With me? Okay. So when you do this, this, you're saying get allocate that much memory for me to store an object with it, which has a string yay attached to a key called name that is inside of an object. All of that information is stored in memory. Now, when you change A to 5 and B to 7, is anything still using this object? C. Good. Suppose I did this. <coughs> is now is anything from our application able to get to this object? No. You've lost it, right? There's no more, there's nothing else pointing at it. There's nothing referencing it. You can no longer go back and take it. It's lost, right? There is something called automatic garbage collection. This exists in JavaScript and it exists in Java. What is garbage collection? Garbage collection means it, there's, a, there's a part of a program that wakes up every particular amount of time looking for things that cannot be accessed. Garbage, if you will. And then when it finds them, it goes back to memory and, and cleans them up. And that memory is now a, a, a free and available for you to use again. If it did not do this, what could happen? Eventually you will run out of memory. Remember, memory is finite. You don't have infinite amount of memory, right? So when you start making objects and whatever, functions, every time you make something new, you're allocating some memory. If you don't deallocate the memory, that is to say you don't free the memory that you've taken, that you've claimed as your, as your own, eventually you will run out. So it makes sense that if you don't need something anymore, you free it, right? So you can use it again. Sounds reasonable, right? So the way to do that is in JavaScript and in Java is to simply lose the reference to the object. The garbage collector will automatically clean up for you. For those of you who have done C or C++ in the past, there is no automatic garbage collection. Every time you take memory, you have to malloc it or allocate it, you have to take it, and then you yourself have to explicitly call a function called free to free the memory. In JavaScript and Java, the, the automatic garbage collector will do this for you without you worrying about it at all. Yes? So if you will not write C, will refer to the name? Say that one more time, John. If we will not write C, will refer to If we don't do this, yes. What does C refer to name? C now refers to this. Uh, look, let's go back. I'm going to show exactly this over here, right? So in here we have A, the first line, this, means make a variable A and have it point to an object which has name yay. Yes? Then it says now have B take the same value. Well, what is the value of A? It's the pointer, it's the reference, right? So that means B is also going to take a pointer. Yes? Okay. Then C also takes whatever B has. Well, B has a pointer, a reference, so C also has a reference. Okay, now, A we change what A is. We say no longer be a reference to, to that object. Now become a value called 5. Yeah? So we erase the reference and we set 5. Then we say B should have a value of 7. So we erase the reference and have a value of 7. Now if later I did this, look, if I now said A is now C, what would happen? You tell me. Exactly. So now A will ref whatever C has is what A will have. Uh huh. Now, if A dot name, if I change that to Joe, what will be 
C dot name. Also, John. Joe, in Chi? Why? Because they're both pointing at the same thing. So if you if A, you do dot name and you change this to Joe, right? C is also pointing at the same thing where the name is Joe. Barza Chen? Is that clear? Okay, so the question that you might have is when do you reference something and when do you have the value of it explicitly? There are primitive types and there are objects and arrays. Objects and arrays are referenced. Primitive types are stored as actual values. For example, in JavaScript, we have numbers. We have booleans. Um, we have, what do we have? Strings. But, um, the, we, have, we have arrays. But e, we have objects. What else? Oh, we have functions. C, D, E, F. What else do we have? Truth and false values. Yeah, but what are the values? The values themselves. Ah, okay, we have, we have NAN, I guess. Okay, those are like empty values, so don't worry about those. We have strings, numbers, uh, array, or, no, we don't have characters. In JavaScript, you just have strings. If you want a character, you just have a string with uh, one thing inside. That's a character. Um, man, I forgot. Okay, this is enough. Okay, look. These are values, right? There's a one, there's a true, there's a, there's a strict, like those are values explicitly, right? So, okay, no problem. Um, but these, actually, wait, hang on, aren't strings? You see? Yeah, okay. The strings are strings are a little more complicated because they're uh, they're objects, but they're immutable, and we'll talk about what that means later. So don't worry about strings for now. Okay. So just think about these: a one and a boolean. These are values that are stored into the variable directly, right? So what that means is that if I had another one like z and I set that to a, what is inside of z now? A one, the actual value. If I did this, B, what is inside of Z? True. What if I did this? What is actually stored underneath inside of Z? A reference to this array. If I did this, it would be a reference to this object, and if I did this, it would be a reference to this function. You can see the difference between the things that we would store as values and the things that we would store as references. Like containers, it, arrays, objects, things that have other things inside are things you reference. A function is also something you reference because in reality functions are actually objects in JavaScript. Don't worry about that. Um, but just values, like I'm a number, that's it. I don't contain anything else. I am that. Okay, no problem. That's an actual value. So, how's coming, Mike? Yes. Can we have references to references? Like yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not C. I know what you mean. You can't have like a, a pointer and then have another thing that takes. A Can we say that the C is equal C refers to A <coughs> A's reference? So if we change A, then no, 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 no. You can't do that because. No, because the references aren't like C++ where literally the value is the reference and then you have to dereference it to get the, you don't have that. It's, that's just how it is underneath the covers. So if you do let A and you have that be this, and then you have let B and you have that be A, both of them just happen to reference A. So if you just do B, you mean object. If you just do A, you mean object. But you can't then figure out the actual reference like address the way you can in C. Yeah, you can't do that. 
for good reason, by the way, because in, in C, you can then do like pointer arithmetic where you can like add a value and then reference something else. Yeah, that, we don't let you do that stuff here. That's, that stuff is dangerous. Um, okay. So raise your hand if you did not understand this idea of references versus values. Everyone understood. Okay, so question. So now imagine we have this. Now then we have let um, Z is an object which has name. Ah, come on. Okay, then we pass, at, we call f with z, and then we console.log z.name. And here we do, well, let me do this, a.name, we change it to 888. Okay, what will print to the screen? Oh, Nike. S object. There is a reference from Z to that object, right? What is what is that? Uh, ha. That's what this is, right? Then we pass Z into F and, and the value of Z goes into A. But what is the actual underlying value of Z? It's the pointer, right? It's the reference. So now A inside of this function also references the same one. This is known as passing by reference. It's not something you have to do explicitly. It's just when you do it, that's what happens. A reference is passed. So now A points at the same thing. So when A changes the name, what happens? The same one. The same thing that Z is pointing at gets changed. So when you console log Z, you get 888. Huh? Okay. 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 Good. And okay. Get them. Uh, hmm. Toop. Toop puppet. Okay. Ah, I know. Okay. This is my function. It has a hole. Okay. <laughs> I know, we've already gone through this. And let's just pretend I have a hole on this side too for the output, for the return, right? Um, in this case, I'm going to create a function that doesn't actually have an output. It just takes something in and just, that's it. It does something. There's nothing returned. Notice there's no return in that function, right? So there's no hole here, only a hole here. Okay, all right. So we have this function that has a hole. Um, I can give it stuff in here and then it can use that inside. We all know this, right? This is basic. Okay. In the beginning, remember, we were doing things like giving it a number. So I could give it, say, one and a three, and it could add them together and return a four, right? Okay. So you guys understand that I can take some value and put it in here, right? Okay. And it's easy enough to understand that if I take a value like a five or a six, I'm passing five or a six, literally that value, and I'm putting in here. So if I make a variable called z that has a 5 in it, and I pass that in here, I'm passing 5. I'm not passing z, I'm not passing anything weird, I'm literally passing the value 5. Now inside this box, this function, is giving 5 a name, so you can refer to it. We call that a over there. So if I give it a 1, a will take 1. If I give it a 30, A will take 30. If I give it a string saying hello world, A will take hello world. Is that part also clear? Okay, now suppose I have a variable that is not, not an object itself, it's referencing an object. 
Remember, objects are always referenced. They're pointed at. So, I know. Okay. Uh, this guy. When I go in, then I go into this. <laughs> okay. What I'm actually passing in is my hand. Okay? So my hand goes inside. A then takes my hand. It's still pointing at him. This is what I mean by passing a reference, right? So look here. Here Z is pointing at Anatin Chajan. Ashot. It's pointing at Ashot. And this is me, Ruben. <laughs> Okay, Ruben is pointing at Ashot, right? Okay, then when you pass Ruben through the hole, okay? Okay, so Ruben goes into the hole. The thing that gets passed though is not me, it's my hand. It's this pointer here. It's the reference to Ashot. So A takes that pointer. It's still pointing at the same thing that Ruben's pointing at, Ashot. And so then they go to Ashot and they say, Ashot John, your name is now 888. Regardless of how he might feel about that fact, we've now changed Ashot's name to 888. And so here I'm still pointing at the same person, right? At the same object, if you will. Okay, so then here, when I try to print, I get Ashot's new name, which is 888. You understand what I mean by passing by reference? Okay, so just to contrast the two, let's do A and a B. B is now set to 6. We set that, and we do another one, let's say... Um, Okay, then we pass agent here, and then we print console.log age. And in here we change B to 6. <clears throat> huh? Ah, sorry, huh? Shrunk also. Okay, so uh, Ruben is pointing at Ashot, and age is pointing at 17. But it's not pointing at 17, age ha is 17. This is referencing, but this is actually the thing itself. Then we pass Ruben and age. What are we actually passing? We're passing one reference and one 17. So A takes the reference to Ashot and B just takes 17. Which is why when I modify name, I'm modifying the same person. I'm modifying Ashut. But if I were to just change this, what is age here after I print it? It's still 17. <clears throat> Another thing you can think of is if I did A is now 7, what, what happens now? Watch. Let me give you another one. Forget, forget everything we did below this line. If I did this, A is an object. Let B is A, right? Then I change B to 7. What is A? You understand why? Yeah. Let me show you one more time so you understand it. A is pointing at an object. B is pointing at the same object, right? That's here. The second line does that. Then I change B to 7. Barza ches, kana. Okay, so now if this is obvious, apply the same logic here. A has a reference, has a reference to the, to the same thing that Ruben has a reference to. We then change what A has. It's no longer a reference, it's now the value of 7. But Ruben continues to reference Ashot. Okay, think of it this way. I'm referencing Ashot. I say, hey, have you met Ashot? He's like, he's awesome. And now you're referencing Ashot as like, he's the man. 
And then for some reason, you decide, ooh, seven. <laughs> that doesn't change the fact that I'm still referencing Ashot. Right? But now you are thinking about seven. Okay? We're variables. <laughs> okay. Um, did, did that sort of make sense? Yes? Okay. So, the idea is this. Whenever you pass things to a function, you can pass them in one of two ways. Pay attention. Pass by reference or pass by value. Got it? Reference means the, you're passing this. Value means you're passing the actual value. Cool? Uh -huh. Okay. The same thing happens in Java, by the way. So if we go to Java and we open something up, hang on. Uh, can you guys see? Is this enough? There we go. Okay. Let's create a public static void uh, foo that takes an int, A. And then we change A to 6. And then in here we do int uh, val is 99 and we call foo with a val and we system.out.println val. What will print on the screen? 99. Just because I'm changing, again, r r the rules are the same, guys. Val has 99 in it. That 99 gets sent to A, so A now has 99. I then change what A has to 6. Val still has 99. Yes? Is there anything weird or obscure about what I just did? We got this. Okay, now let's, we need an object. Um, actually, let's do an array. That's an easy one. Okay, so let's do a, an array of ints. So let's do val, new, what was the syntax for this stuff? Something like this? All oh, right, new int. Uh, intro sends me bunch, eh? Oh, you're right, we can do this. We can just do one, two, three, four, and five. Good. Then we, this needs to take as an argument an array of ints. And let's have it change a index zero to 99. There. So here I want to print val of zero. So if, wait, so if I do this, <clears throat> Okay, what will I see on the screen? One, right? Index of zero has a value of one. Yes? Any? That's simple, right? It's an array. <clears throat> Kinetic. It's an array, right? It's a list, which has one, two, three, four, five inside. And the thing at index zero has a value of one, index of one has a value of two, index of three has a value of whatever. Zero, one, two, three has a value of four. We know this, it's just arrays, right? Nothing new. <clears throat> Indexes are passed by value or by reference? Arrays. Reference. So, <clears throat> why? Because again, think of them as containers, right? They have other things inside, so ergo, they're by reference. Okay, so A now has the same reference to the same object as val. It changes the value at the zero index, that is to say the first value in that array. <clears throat> so, when we print the first value in this array, what should we now see? 99. <clears throat> okay. You guys see how it's the same thing that we did in JavaScript? The same rules apply. You have primitive values that get passed by value, and then you have things that contain things inside of them, like objects and arrays, that get passed by reference. That's it. Yo, over. Basic.
Okay, question. What is Fu? Yes, but it's a reference to an array. Which array? The same array that Val is pointing at. So what you have is Val is pointing at an array. One, two, three, four, five. Foo is pointing at the same array. It's referencing the same array, right? Then that array gets passed to this function. Wait, there's a little confusion here because I have foo and foo the same name. Let's call this val2. Okay. Val2 is pointing at the same array, right? Then I pass this array into here. So now A is also pointing at the same array. I then change the zero index to 99. Val and Val2 are both pointing at the same array, so the zero index of that array is 99. You're looking at Ashot, I'm looking at Ashot. If Ashot decides to shave his head, right? This, both of us are looking at the same Ashot. So both of us now know Ashot who has a shaved head, right? Okay. Good? 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 Good. Okay. Ah, passing by reference. You and I know Ashot. So this is me. This is me. This is Ruben. Uh, Ruben, this is you. Your name is? Ashok. Ashok? 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 Ashok knows the array. Who is Ashot? And um, Ashok, you know the same person that Ruben knows, which is Ashot. We then send Asho to the next room. The, we introduce someone in the next room saying, hey, this is Asho. That someone is, is A. This is the um, cafe worker. Cafe worker. Okay. The cafe worker now knows that this is Asho. And then the cafe worker ch shaves Asho's, Asho's head, modifies Asho. <coughs> It's the same Ashot that you and I know, right? You understand what I mean by reference. It's the same object being, sorry, it's the same object being moved around, just different people keep referencing it, yeah? Unlike num like numbers are not like that, right? If I say, hey, that's a two, I have my two, you have your two. If, if you change your two to four, I still have my two. Yeah, ask it, Sasha. You guys get this? Yeah? Okay. So, let's write a filter function. Which takes an array of numbers. Um, and returns all the numbers that are greater than 5. Okay? Um, so what we can do is... Uh, Let's do it in JavaScript. Java just drives me crazy. It ruins everything. No, it doesn't ruin. No, Java's great. Yay. You guys are going to be like doing Java for the next two years of your life. So, no, no, it's okay. We love Java. Java's great. <laughs> we love Java. Okay. Um, what do we want to do? Oh, right. Okay. I get called nine states. Okay. So. Um, const uh, filter is a function that takes an array and then returns all the values. 
Okay, so what we can do is make another array, like, you know, let uh, results. And then um, f for let i is zero, i is less than r dot length, i plus plus, for each one of those, if r i is, what did I say, greater than five? Greater than five, then results dot push um, r i. Okay, and then we return results. Okay, uh, is that, that's easy, right? Everyone understands this? Yes? Okay, notice that I'm returning a new array. I'm not modifying the array that came in and returning that. Yes? However, if I were to instead do this, um, let's start with r dot length minus one, as long as i is greater than zero, or equal to zero, i minus minus. In Jahannam? Ah, sorry, Rabel. That's space, huh? Okay, Rabel. Um, okay, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is splice the original array, r dot splice i one. What does splice do? Splice literally cuts that value out of the array. That whole index is removed. So here I'm saying starting with this index, remove one thing. So it literally removes that index out. So one means that one Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It shifts over. Yeah. So now, whatever was on the next index becomes that index. And if you write yes. And if you write I2? If, oh, if I did this, this means remove... Okay, suppose you had this. If I did remove index, let's say 1, that's this index, right? And as a second argument, I passed a two, it would delete these two. No, so notice I'm decrementing, right? Look. Ha. Ah. I start at the end. This is the key. I start here, right? Then I, ch I check, do I have to remove this? If so, I remove it, I move here. If I don't have to remove it, I move here. Either way, I keep moving left. So anything that I've removed, it's going this way that becomes a problem. So I have to do some bookkeeping. Okay, the point I want to make is this though. Um, you actually don't need to return anything now. If you just did this, if you just call, you know, let's say you have a const r with, or list, uh, list, which has inside of it one, two, three, four, five. If I then call filter with this list, I can now console.log list. What will I see on the screen? Oh, sorry. Okay, of course, because none of, only none of them are bigger than five. Okay. Um, wait, we need to splice out the ones that are less than and keep the ones that are not. So let's do. Let's remove everything that's less than uh, three. There. Why don't I splice it with what? Sorry, because someone asked a question. Sorry, sorry, one, okay. So let's remove everything below three and let's do one, two, three, four. So what should we have in the result? Three and four. You see how literally this list got modified? Yeah? Why? Because again, list, when I pass it, array is pointing at the same thing that list is pointing at. It's referencing the same array. And so here, when we modify the array, we're literally modifying this array. And then later when we print it, we're modifying this modified array. 
Which is that? Length of range is right. In charge of? Length of range. Yeah. It's right. No, you can't, you can't change it. You can't say dot length is now 5. But it's mutable. It, it modifies over time. Like if you keep pushing, length is going to get keep getting bigger. Yes. If you do splice, length comes back. Yeah. Watch, 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 watch. Console.log list.length. It's 2. Whereas if I did it here, it's 4. In charge Can you write that function? What do you mean? Can you implement splice yourself? How? No, but the point is you have to use some native function to then access the array, right? Splice is that na native function. Tell me once. Once poche lo array. Me at funksa apet for of poche is che. Splice hen set funksa na for of the poche mas. Che. Yeah, it's a native function. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, question. Let's move away from this for a second. Remember how we used to do system.out.print line, and then we used to pass in some text in Java? How do I do that? I want to be able to do this in JavaScript. Someone help me. Well, let's go, let's go back. What is system? Okay, so help me make an object called system. Okay, what is inside of that? A key called out, what is it? It's an object. What is inside of that? A function called print line, which takes some text. And then what does that do? Cool, so now this will work. See? Can we in Java? Okay, now let's do the same thing in Java. Uh, so console is an object that has inside of it uh, a log, right? So f how do we make an object in Java? You need a class. So new, oh sorry, let me zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, so we say new file called console. Um, thing is classes need to be capital K. Okay. okay, let's do console. Um, dot Java. Okay, there. Then we do a public class console. And then in here we need a static function, right? We don't want to make an instance of a console, we just want to do console dot something. So we do public static, uh, it doesn't return anything, so void, uh, log, and it takes what as an argument? <laughs> string. Then here we do system.out.println stir. Okay, so now in here we can do console.log. Yay. There you go. And we can run this. Yay. Yes? Uh, how we can change the values of Java? In JavaScript, we use implications plus. Ah, okay. So, data structures. Uh -huh. So, the array inside of JavaScript is not really an array. Let me explain. And the, the actual definition of an array isn't just that it's a list, it has certain very specific properties. What do I mean by this? An array inside of means this. At least this is how C++ does it, this is how Java does it. Is it allocates a block of memory. When you specify the length and you specify the type, it knows how big the block needs to be. Example, 
suppose we do this. We have an array, A, which is new int uh, 5. Uh -huh. What this means, well, how big is an integer? Do you remember? Is it 8 bytes or 4 bytes? I can't remember. 4 bytes. Spell 6, spell 6. Uh, int. 4 bytes. Okay, it's 4 bytes. Okay, so we know that it's 4 bytes, right? So uh, 4 times 5? 20. 20. Uh, 20 times 8? 100. <laughs> 20 times 8? 160. Okay, so we need, so what it will do is it will go into memory. If, one moment. Okay, so imagine memory as being this long strip that you can write to or read from. So, that's your memory. And every time you make a variable like A, it creates a block for that, which you puts in the number like 55. You put in another one like C, which has, you know, 98. You have some text here. So um, text might be, you know, A, B, C. Okay, then it wants to allocate an array. It needs to find a block in your memory that fits 160 bits. And it finds it, let's say, here. And it takes this. This is your array. Why is that important? Because your memory has addresses, okay? So, and addresses are specified with numbers. So let's keep it really simple. Let's say that this is address number, I don't know, 28. And then it has five integers in it, right? If the first integer begins at location 28, can anyone guess what address the next integer will begin on? So each one is 4 bytes, right? 4 times 8, 32, 32 bits. So if you're starting at 28, the next one will start at? 28 plus 32. 28 plus 32, good. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, 28 plus 32. This is the next one. Where will the next one start? Ha. Nag, 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 okay. You know, I'll do it on the computer, it's easier. Well, no, I'll do it here. Okay. You have memory. You allocate an array, you take from memory an array, or a block of data. If you want to make an, an array of integers of size 5, how many bits do you have to take from your memory? Well, five times, each, each, each integer is four bytes. Five times four is 20. How many bits are in a byte? Eight. eight. So eight times 20. 160. So you allocate, so inside of here, we have 160 bits. It's kind of awesome. Okay, now, your memory has addresses, locations. Think of it this way. Your memory has a bunch of these, right? Each one of those has a position, a location in that memory. So just for simplicity, let's say this is position number five, this is position number six, seven, eight, pa 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 pa, all the way until five plus 160, which would be 165, right? Simple. Now, 160, you're right, 164, because it's inclusively, okay. So, question. Um, it starts with five, right? So that means the first four bytes, the first number that you're going to store here, watch, let's do this. Let's now do A of zero is, I don't know, nine. 
A of 1 is, I don't know, 99. A of 2 is 63, whatever. Okay. Okay, so what this means, right? Okay, so 4 times 8 is 32. So from here until 5 plus 32, you, or, right, which is, huh? 31, because the last one is already the other one. Fine, whatever. You get, you get what I'm saying. So the 32 bits, however, whatever index you want to start in, are allocated in order to represent the number 9. The next 32 bits are, are stored to represent number, sorry, num first is 9, next is 99, next is 63, and so on and so forth. Yes? Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. In your memory, suppose you want to find what is in index number 4. So you do A4. What the operating system will do underneath is it knows what position your array is starting in. It's starting at 5, right? It, well, it knows the index you want is 4, so, and it knows it's an array of integers. How will it find the memory location from which to read and give you back the value? Exactly. It does math. So here you have int result, and then you can system system dot out dot print. Okay, so when you give it an index, it does some basic mathematics to figure out the address in memory and then just reads it, giving it to you very fast. So in other words, finding something in your list, if you know the index, if you do this, is very fast. You guys see why? Because it doesn't have to go searching. It doesn't have to go one, you know, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then give you that. It jumps directly by address and just reads it and gives it to you. Yes? You guys understand why it's fast. Suppose we did not do that. If we did not take a contiguous piece of memory, suppose we took some piece of memory from here, some piece of memory from here, some piece of memory from here. Now doing this kind of mathematics is not as easy, yes? Because it's not just one strip where you can just jump to where you want. It's now something else. Okay. The problem with an array though is that the size is fixed. It has to be fixed in order for you to know how much memory to take. Yes? But suppose you don't know ahead of time how big the, your data is going to be, how long your data is going to be, how many values. What do, we do, then? What do you do then? You don't do it this way. What you do is you allocate memory, you take a block that specifies information about an item. Let's say about your 9. And you put your 9 in there. It then has a reference to another memory location that has the value 99. Which then has another reference to a different memory location which has the value 63. So, if I told you, give me the third value, index of 2, how would you do it if it was like this? You would start in the first, then you would go in the second, then you would go to the third, and you would give me that. In other words, you would have to do a sequential search, one after the next. What is the benefit of doing this way? You can have as many... Exactly. If you want another one, you just add one more, and then you have it reference that. You want another one, you add one more, you add... So your list can keep growing. What is the drawback to this, pro to this approach? Uh, it takes more time. Exactly. Right. By the way, this approach of having like a, a thing that points to the other thing is called a linked list. It's a list where each thing is linked or connected to the next thing. There is also, this is a kind of a data, you know, the, isn't the next thing you're taking is data structures? This is, I think, the first data structure you're going to learn. This idea of having these things that reference each other. These are known as linked lists. A slightly modified version of that is called a doubly linked list, which means in addition to having everything point at the next thing, everything also has a reference back to the old thing. So that starting from anywhere, you can go either this way or that way. So if you start at index 5, 
you can go not only forward, but you can also go back if you want. You can always get the previous value, the previous value, or the next value, the next value. Got it? Cool. Yes, sir. So how we can create this kind of linked list in Java? Good. Let's create a linked list in Java. Okay. So we need an object. Let's rename our console to something else. Let's call it item. Let's create a singly linked list. So let's do a public uh, item next. Okay, that's it. Then here in our, in here, we're going to create one of, oh, we also want to store, what do you want to store in the list? Numbers? What do you want? Numbers. Numbers, fine. So this number, I want to have a value, public int uh, value. Now, in here, we create one of these items. So let's get rid of this stuff. Um, item uh, root. Root is like the starting or start. New item. Um, so then we do start dot start dot value is, what do we want the first value to be? 20, 20 how specific, good. Okay. What do you want the next value to be? Okay, so we need another item. Um, item, whatever, one, let's say. New item. Item one, one dot value is 48. Now what we do is we say start dot next is item one. Give me another one. Uh, item one dot next is now item two. I can keep doing this, right? And so if I want to reach, let's say, if let's suppose I lose this, now I have a function that takes one of these linked lists. So I say public static void um, uh, list or, oh, let's print all the values in this list. Yeah, okay, so um, print list. What do you need to do this? All you need is the first thing, right? The, the starting point. So let's do item start. Okay, then all you do is you say, uh, let's use a do while. Do system.out.print line. Um, actually, let's not call it start, let's call it item. Item.value. Then while. One sec. Okay, here, let's do it. Let me keep it very simple. Let me system.out.print line item.value. Okay, then while item.next is not equal to null. We want to item be item dot next and then system dot out dot print line item dot value. Can we go over? Yes, easily. What everyone understand what this does? You print the value that's attached to the item. Because we're passing when we call this, when we call print list. We're going to call it with start. What value does start have? 27. So this first part just prints 27. Is that clear? Then we say item.next. Next is the reference from that item to the next item. Boom, 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 boom. Amen, meka, hajortina, hagum. Hasma, hajortakat, heche. If you have a next, you get the next and you put it into item and then you print that value. Does that one have a next? Yeah. If it does, you get it, you print it. Does that one, and you keep doing this until you get to the last one that doesn't have one after it. And then you're done. Yes? 
Uh, what if our arguments were uh, strings and in, it, for example, first one is a string, second one is null, and third one again a string? That's fine, you can do this. Um, okay, so let's change value to a string. Let's go back to here, so let's set this to, to that. Let's not change set it to a value, by default it's null. And then let's set this one to yo. Okay, what do you think will happen? Oh, sorry, what happened? Oh, okay. What do you think will happen? Why? The, you're not checking, look. You're not checking whether the value is null, you're checking whether the next reference is null. By the way, can you modify the list after you've made it? Can you, let's say, splice things out? Can you remove something in between? Right, all you have to do, look, if I wanted to get rid of item one, all I have to do, start.next, just change that to, uh, sorry, so suppose I do this, and now we have start which references item one, item one references item two. Later I can say start.next is item two, two, yeah. Now the reference to item 1 is lost. What happens when an object can't be found? It becomes garbage. And then the garbage collection comes and removes it from memory. What's next? Start the harumka. In here, right now, we have a reference to item 2, actually. Um, but suppose we did all this in a function, like, uh, public static, hang on, public static um, item, make a linked list. What will this function do? It creates a linked list with three items in it. Is that clear? Then I say print list. Uh, pa -pa item start is make list. So now I have a reference to the first thing in my list. Yes? Okay. Then what I can do is I can say um, start.next is start.next.next. What did I just do? I removed the second one. Right? Okay, look, you're saying this. Oh, Jesus. First, what will this do? It makes an object called, I, called start and sets the value to, let's say, something simpler like O. So we have an object which has a value of O. Try it. We have another item which has a value of OK. And another item which has a value of Yo. Then we say start has a next reference to this one. So start, this is start, has a next reference to this one. That one has a next reference to that one. So as long as I have access to this, I can get to this just by going bong, 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 and eventually getting to it. Right? If I want to remove this, all I have to do is that. I've now removed this. 
If it's garbage, which then gets collected by the garbage collector.